pushes the piston back with hot air. The air is transferred down into the power piston down here, which cools the air. And then the flywheel pushes the air back up in there that's been cooled, and, and it reheats the back up, and the expansion of the air again pushes the piston back. So it's a closed, it's a closed loop system. The air stays contained. And as it cooled off, it pulled it back. And, and uh, the piston in this displacer doesn't touch. It has a 30 second clearance all the way around, so it doesn't touch. It just flows back side. It just, it's called a displacer. This takes up room. Uh, you got to turn it by hand. There's a crank over here to do it with. Takes a minute. Takes a minute for it to warm up. Yeah, that's the the, the, uh, the uh, heat on the end of the engine uh, is a pretty thick what piece of metal. There. That's what got us where we are today. The boundaries could make that cool. One of the most efficient engines. Yeah. A Chevy head. Look at our port. Look at the engineer. Uh, uh, that's the first engine you built? Wow. I built two of them. I gave one to Mark Kane. And I built this one. Uh, <laughs> can, can you get enough heat for the side water? Yeah, yeah. Really? Sure. yeah. There's a guy in the club that built one. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it has a big uh, parabolic on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Solid. Yeah. 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 You build a miniature one. He's got a he's got a four cylinder Sterling that pressurizes at the three thousand pounds, and it runs off the cam drive. It's phenomenal. And he runs a big prop on it, and it's, it's I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's Shakes a little bit because of the precipitation.